So this is uh, middle of October, sunny northern California. We did get a freak rain a few weeks ago. Normally the water, you can see all the driftwood on the top of this thing. That's kind of like a dirt road, but where the grass ends and turns to dirt, that's where the water level normally is in the wintertime. So, got a little bit of water left. Not much. So, purpose of this video is... Da -da -da. <coughs> so, I didn't get another 701. I got a 501 just because of my love for being off-road. And while I could still go places on the 701, I had to be careful. There was always this thought in your head that eh, might get stuck. It would be hard to pick the bike up and turn it around. Uh, as I've ventured off-road a few times on this, uh, no worries. You just go wherever you want. and You can pick the bike up over a tree or whatever. So I've already had to do some stuff to it just because stock condition, it's it's got a lot of rough edges. So uh, I'll pick up what I've done now. I've got about uh, 750 miles on the bike, something like that. And here comes a car. And uh, <laughs> I'll wait for him to go by. Normally nobody's out here. So one of the first things I did is I called uh, Bob up at Cycle By in Oregon. Um, I tried to I tried to buy the bike from him, but it's, it was going to take three days to go up there and come back home. I wanted to support the guy. I've never met him, but he's always treated me really well, very conscientious about everything. So uh, I've gotten all these parts from uh, from them. So I started out with the Extreme Enduro skid plate. What comes with the bike is plastic, and it's like, what a joke, especially with all the rocks that I have. Um, these are Evo 4 uh, foot pegs, and they can drop... You can put a shim in here. It's not a shim, but it's a collar. And you can offset the collar. So by doing it the way I did, it actually lowers the foot peg five-eighths of an inch, which is the equivalent of raising the handlebars. When you're standing up, that was a nice benefit right off right off the bat for that. Uh, obviously, better brush guards uh, with some metal protection. Stock are just little plastic wings that bolt on to the, to the lever here. And then, of course, the stock, stock mirrors are... Oh, they're actually so sad, it's it's not even funny at that point. Why did they do that? But anyway, I went with a ram mount system with uh, the mirrors I can bend, twist out of the way. I'm going to change the gearing. Uh, the sprocket and um, chain, obviously, are the same size for the 701. So this is a 45 tooth. I've got a 49, so I'm going to go to a little larger rear sprocket. Part of the reasons for doing this video so you can see uh, here the transmission in the road environment. I lost my left blinker in the first eight miles, so somebody clearly forgot to tighten something down. Seat concepts. Bob was like, yeah, you're going to want a new seat. I was like, no, I'll be all right. <laughs> I think the stock seat is about five and a half inches wide, and it's, it's like sitting on a two-by-six. Brutal. So... Um, yeah, needed to get a, a seat concept seat. Uh, one bolt holds this thing in, and it's it's an extra probably two inches wide, and it's got it's actually got some density to it, so it's a whole lot more comfortable, even though it doesn't look like there's that much more. Uh, these things come with the Continental uh, Twin Duro tires, and these things are just crap. I mean, they're horrible on the asphalt, and they're hor horrible off road. Uh, I guess that's a true compromise uh, at that point. So anxious to get get rid of these and get uh, real knobbies on there. And uh, the heat guard, uh, again, guys that cycle by, it's like, yeah, you want the heat guard. If you fall over, the pipe's going to run up against your leg. And it's like, oh, I don't crash that much. But uh, just having my feet out, dabbling through the woods around some trees and stuff, I ended up burning my pants. So, okay, need, uh, need the heat guard as well. And I got the um, fast way steering stabilizer. I always had the Scott stuff. And my only ding with this thing is it's, this is the adjustment knob, this red guy here. And when you're riding, there's the only room you have is for two little fingers on here. Trying to turn that thing is pretty hard to do on the move. You basically got to stop. But theoretically, once you're, once you're set up, you should be good. So I've got uh, more stuff at home uh, to put on the bike. Bigger gas tank. This is 2.2. I am out of gas in about 108 miles. So 50 miles the gallon thereabouts, which is a, enough time to get where you want to go and play around for a while and figure i got to get out of here because you're going to be out of fuel. So I got the Cherubis 4.1. It, it does have the molded wings, but they tell me that the stock shrouds and everything else stays the same. 
so we will we will see but at least by going to four gallons I'll be up to 200 miles uh, and that's typically what I'll do in a in a good full day so let's go for a little putt up the road um, take note of the transmission with this gearing and uh, it's got an odd place for the key too it's kind of tucked away underneath here um, 52 and a half miles since I got gas so I'm exactly half empty at this point so first couple gears are actually really tight really close together so you know I can go into second gear right now and it's got good throttle response going to third 20 miles an hour and it's pretty torquey it's no 701 it's pretty good and then fourth really starts to widen out uh, fifth more than six you got to be buzzing along the fifth pretty good because six is almost like an overdrive this road is really narrow and the sun is really bright now that's fourth but you're gonna, you have to do a lot of downshifting if you back off at all on these corners, you gotta make sure nobody's coming. This is all four. Brakes are really good, but these tires are a little spooky. I had more confidence on the 701 with full bodies. That's third, wound out, close to it. So coming down here, there was a uh, Ambulance, bunch of CHP, a couple fire engines. And I saw a guy on a 690 Enduro and a Harley that were parked on the side of the road. And some guy in a pickup truck. You can see the grass is dirt's messed up here. I guess this is where they walked up. He went off the road right here. You can only say that was an exciting ride for sure. Apparently the truck is almost at the bottom pretty far down, but the guy was able to walk out of there. He was high as a kite, so he probably didn't feel anything. Probably will tomorrow. All right. Slow corner. Back into first gear for the corner. bike a whole lot faster than what the tires are willing to take. You can tell third gear is pretty wide. Pulls good down low. But you definitely got a downshift in tight corners. That's second. But I, what I found is out on the like right now. I mean, I can leave it in fourth, but off on the trail to grab fourth. You want to shut down a little bit, make sure the corner's clear. You end up having a downshift. So the goal now is to, uh, you can tell it's a pretty good increase, height-wise, elevation-wise. But uh, I'll splice in after this, uh, the rest of the improvements, changes, modifications to the bike, and we'll uh, get off-road for sure. Then in another hour, the deer will be out. When the deer come out, I go in. All right, I'll rip through the gears here. In the second at 22, 45, 60, 70, 78 in the sixth. actually as fast as I've gone on this. So based on 
on that. I'm sure it'll do at least 95. All right, enough of this asphalt nonsense. We need to get into the woods. I'm on a bike that will actually turn. I am fighting my steering stabilizer. I don't have called the third way set up right. It's called return to center. I think I've got a little too much resistance on there. It gives the bike a really odd feel under certain conditions. That being one of them just back then. The front end is super stable on this bike. You can hit these cross ruts. Doesn't lose its composure. Look at that, signs of water once a time. Somebody's done the bare minimum to here. Right now it's looking down pretty good. This is a an incline, it's not a hill per se. Now in the first.
nice if you can just get across those ruts. Don't have to worry about staying in a particular line. This stuff is slippery. Trail's got the yeah, tree. It hasn't gone anywhere yet. So there was this uphill here. We came down it early winter last year and it was brutal coming down. The trees were in the way and that also be a good traction test. like that. Uh, I'm a sucker for the small trails.
trail to the top. Whoa! That one hurt. The branch, not the rock. Well, the rock, you probably hit the branch. <laughs> Bit of an incline to that. Jeez. Not on the 701, I came flying down that on the KX 500 one time, like three years ago. Well, that's as good a time as any. Let's, uh, let's do one quick final little review here of what I've done and where I'm going to stop for the time being anyway. So, I'll show you how bright the Cyclops light is. That thing is just brutally bright. I'll put a still picture after this for the for the low and high beam. That thing's really bright. And it's got a little fan on it, so when you turn off the ignition, you can hear, you probably won't be able to hear it here, but there's this little hum going on until it cools down and shuts off. So, in its uh, final form now, it's dirty, but then again, it should be. So, uh, the Cherubi is 4.1 gas tank, and actually, the look of that thing does not bother me at all. I was afraid it was going to look like, you know, a, a motorcycle attached to a gas tank, but it blends in pretty well. You keep the original um, shrouds, <laughs> and they don't really reach, and they give you these O-rings, basically, and you just rubber band them on there, so to speak, and... Uh, Somebody gave me a, a good hint when the thing was empty. I put in one gallon at a time and just drew lines on there so I can always look at the tank and go, okay, I know how much I've got in there. So now the uh, the tubeless tires are on, running uh, 12 pounds in the front, 4 pounds in the rear. And you can only do that 4-pound gig with um, the Maxxis tires because there's, the carcass is just so hard. But that tire's got... Um, Oh, probably a couple hundred of uh, miles of asphalt on it. And then a whole weekend ride to Tahoe over the mountains. 
and then bopping around here I did a, a, a 90 mile loop the other day so the only thing left I've got to do to this thing I think will be the uh, fender replacement bring that up tight with the little tiny blinkers but uh, what else oh the other thing I didn't mention before it was flatland by the way for the uh, heat shield flatland racing and on the extreme enduro skid plate you've got this it's a rubber it's a hard formed rubber as a linkage protector and it, it's designed to work with the extreme enduro skid plate but it's pretty slick I like it because you've got your linkage hanging down and when you're crossing over rocks it's nice that you've got some kind of protection there. This thing has got some crazy ground clearance, so when we were up in Tahoe, I was just expecting, just from that 701 being a lot lower, significantly lower, uh, just just waiting, that, that crunch of rocks banging into the bike. It's like I never had come off these ledges and expecting to, to drag, and it's like never touched. So tons of, uh, tons of room from that standpoint. Other than that, I like the bike, uh, for sure. Obviously, it's, it's basically, you know, it's truly an off-road bike that's street legal. Um, I plan to put a ton of miles on this thing and have a blast with it. So it looks like a good choice for, for mostly off-road. The 701, I mean, if you're going to do mostly uh, asphalt or dirt roads, that 701 would be really tough to beat. That thing was a lot more stable uh, on the asphalt, like a canyon road kind of a thing, even with full knobbies. Um, this because of the lighter weight this thing tends to you know not hunker down quite as well but uh it, it definitely doesn't have the power i mean if anything this thing feels underpowered to me uh on the street not so much on the dirt but on the street it feels kind of kind of sluggish it feels like you're riding a little a little 250 that you need to to rev up and make it go but uh that's only because of the extreme distances on the asphalt. When you're when you're in the forest, it feels pretty dang quick. So uh, anyway, there we've got it. The only last thing to do is is that bigger sprocket. As soon as I can find my chains, I've got like three brand new chains tucked away in boxes somewhere. I have the sprocket, so I'll bump up to a 49 tooth. All right, that concludes.